recent estimates uh, suggest that one in three internet users is a child, which means our most precious resource is vulnerable. Now, joining us on stage is Oren Keneal from Apps Flyer and Patience Hagen. Touch upon the idea of internet privacy, children safety, and regulation. Hi, Oren and Patience. Where are you calling in from this lovely day? Hi, thank you for having us. Uh, I'm from uh, Israel, Tel Aviv today. Brilliant. And where are you, Patience? In New York. Thank you so much. You too. I, I love your background. Is that a guitar? Yes, it is. It's a few of them. Pandemic mm -hmm. hobby. Pandemic ho hobby is always great. Guys, I'm going to leave the stage to your lovely, capable hands. Thank you so much. Oren, it's great to be here with you. Um, and I can't wait to hear your thoughts on internet privacy and safety on the role of regulation and most importantly, what the mobile ecosystem can do to ensure a safe digital experience for all. Mm -hmm. So first off, yeah. as, as the industry moves toward privacy, do you think we'll have to say goodbye to personalization? I, I think that this is a great question. So, um, um, because I, I, I'll, I'll start by saying no. I think that the people that are trying to do the connection between privacy and the trade-off, I think that we can enjoy harmony. And this is basically what we've been thinking and doing for the last couple of years. Um, but maybe before that, we need to maybe define privacy better. Or what is good privacy? Uh, so most of the discussions in the media in general are, are around cookies and IDFA, uh, which I know and believe it's just the tip of the iceberg. Um, and, and as for the average reader, it might think that if cookies are going to go away, IDFA is going to go away, device ID is going to go away, we're going to have great privacy, which is not accurate to say the least. Um, and, and for us, as a company that builds software that enhances user experience, enhances value uh, for consumers and preserve privacy, uh, we must ask, us, ask us ourselves, what is good privacy? And, and we found a very simple framework uh, just to think about that. So uh, all our team members are always thinking about consumers and the end users when they are designing and building uh, products and software for our customers. Now, we are a B2B company. We do not have consumer business, but we are serving consumer business and brands and some of the largest brands in the world to do just that, uh, to provide great user experience, great personalization, great value, and preserve privacy. Um, and for that, we always need to think through the eyes of consumers. Uh, and we found that this is very powerful because this is not only a really good regulation prediction, um, but this is a great way to enhance both privacy and user experience, and I'll explain. Um, we cannot go uh, to the market and to our customers and say, hey, this is a technology that will allow you to enhance uh, uh, user privacy, but you know, you need to pay price on value and user experience. So probably most of the custom cu our customers were not going to buy it, but what if because we're not regulators, we're not, we cannot tell them, hey, you do that, yes, you're gonna pay a price, uh, but believe us, it's, it's worthwhile. Um, what we can do is to develop technologies that preserve the same level of value and user experience using a connected device, using the internet, but also enhancing privacy. And this kind of thing, everybody will buy because it's enhancing both. And, and this is why it's, a, it's, it's really a great framework. Um, Specifically, when we are thinking about privacy, and this is something that we had a lot of, and we're having a lot of debates internally, what is good privacy for consumers? I'm just going to touch a few uh, uh, examples for the audience. Uh, one of the things is awareness, uh, awareness of what kind of data companies have and, uh, and who have access to what and what they do with it, for one example. Um, one of the things that is really important and, and create a lot of anxiety with people are things that they don't know or things that they perceive as private or want to perceive as private, such as email uh, or SMS or phone calls, things that you perceive as private, but 
maybe there is a computer or a server or something that is reading your email and how it impacts you and what kind of impact it can have on you. Um, um, again, this, these are the things that people do not know, and this is kind of create anxiety. Um, are the devices listening on us? Um, and, and just last year, Apple added an amazing feature to have an indication whether the microphone is on or the camera is on. Uh, so believe it or not, you, you, you couldn't tell uh, before that. Uh, here is an example of a feature uh, that enhances privacy and enhances user experience and trust and confidence in using connected device. Obviously, education, uh, so a lot of publications that are doing wrong recommendations like installing a VPNs and, and the, most of the consumers do not know and the risk involved with uh, such uh, uh, services. Uh, going back to cookies and IDFA and device IDs, and this is kind of uh, most of the discussion that's going on in the market. Um, and, uh, cookies are not good or bad. I think there are a lot of good use cases for cookies and, and IDFA, for example, in personalization and, and, and user experience and value, uh, but also bad use cases such as aggregated device, uh, GPS data and coordinates across apps and stuff like that. Um, and the question, and, and the problem is that the market was or is addicted to user level data or individual user level data. Because if you think about cookies, it's the only way for companies to collaborate and to provide good user experience for the end users. There was no other way. Uh, but the decisions that companies are making are not on the individual. It's not about Oren make that purchase and Oren might, might be interested in that. It's not about me. It's about the navigation. It's about the group of people. Um, and um, um, in the last couple of years, we've been working on such technologies, us and other companies, that provide aggregation. So basically getting the good without the bad. So you have the measurement. You have the aggregation. You don't have the user level, the individual user level data. You can still make good decisions for the, for the customers and good choices for the customers without, uh, without the bad, without the user level data. And um, um, all these enable uh, the ecosystem to continue to have great user experience, great value, and great uh, privacy. Just sometimes uh, things like that takes time because uh, we're talking about 10 and 15 years and 20 years. Uh, that the market used to work in a certain way. Uh, but I believe, and, and we see that in the last uh, two years, that it accelerates. And uh, um, it means that all the brands need to invest uh, significantly uh, uh, on that. Right. Right. Lately, there's been a lot of discussion of regulation. Do you personally think the market should be regulated? And what right. role should a regulator play? Uh, uh, I'll start from the end. Definitely, yes. And I also think that uh, the regulators are years, years, years behind. And until they will catch up, uh, they will uh, the new industry will continue to move rapidly. So it means that they need to move faster than the industry, which is something that I don't see that coming. Um, and I think that we need to think about the regulator job. The regulator, the regulator job is to represent us, people, end users, society, not to tear big companies apart because it's fun, because they're too big. Um, and, and in my view, uh, they need to identify the infrastructure platform that needs to be regulated. One way to think about it is roads and electricity. We are in this conference because we have electricity. So, and we build all these companies because we have electricity and it's accessible and affordable and, uh, uh, and it's uh, regulated. Now, now think about uh, today's infrastructure, today's uh, uh, platform that allow innovation. So instead of me building a company, I need to take care of electricity, take care of roads and all that kind of stuff. In just to add an incremental value on top of it. Today's infrastructure is, is much more than just roads and electricity. I think that this is, we need to think about uh, because everybody's using roads, everybody's using it, uh, the uh, 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 electricity and everybody's using the internet and everybody's accessing the internet in different ways, whether it's OS, whether it's browser, whether, whether it's uh, an app store. So I think that the regular job is to identify these infrastructure platforms 
make sure that everybody having equal play on it um, to make sure that the end users getting great uh, user experience and value and affordable prices. It's also great for everybody. It's also great for big companies. Today, big companies are pushed to control their platform because they could not take the risk that someone else can pull the plug on them. So this is why they're pushing uh, to back to uh, 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 integrate the entire value chain from the internet to the access device, to the device, the OS, the platform, um, uh, the app store and everything. And it's not about them. They're all are good companies, they're not no, no bad companies, but they're pushed. So what I'm trying to say is regulators are good for everybody. They're also good for good for big companies because they allow them to focus on the most important thing and the core value and they're not pushed to do uh, 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 other stuff. I think that this is extremely important and also extremely important to make sure that our kids will be able to innovate on top of the future and the current infrastructure like the electricity and roads. Next, do you believe the internet today is safe enough for children? Um, I, I'll, I'll start by uh, saying that uh, it's, it's horrible uh, for children. Um, and children is, uh, um, is, is very close to mind for a couple of reasons. Uh, first of all, I have kids, uh, young kids that are just starting to use the internet a little bit. That's one. Second, uh, our philosophy to always think about the end users and kids. Uh, um, and number three, which is, uh, is, is a personal family tragedy um, um, that we had uh, a year and a half ago. Uh, we lost, I lost my nephew. Uh, is, he was a 12 years old boy. Uh, happy uh, kid, uh, really into computers and all that. Um, and suddenly we lost him uh, a year and a half ago. Um, and in the last year and a half, I was, uh, me and my family, uh, been researching about that. Um, it really pushed us to learn more about it. And, and I can tell you that the found findings uh, are horrible, um, specifically according to the CDC, suicidal is a leading cause of death in the ages of 10 to 14 and 14 to 20. More than diseases, more than car accidents. Uh, specifically, it is the, the, the leading child injuries uh, uh, by huge margin. By because some cases of or most of the cases of part of the cases of suicidal are not successful, leaving kids with injuries and families with injuries. Um, and research showed that eighty-five percent of suicidal specifically in these ages, are related to internet, uh, to bullying, to abuse, to attacking, to cyber predators. Um, and unfortunately, it's not getting better. It's, it's getting worse and worse and worse. Uh, corona accelerated that. A uh, third of, of, of internet users are kids. Um, and we saw I, I, early indicators show that there, are, there is 4x increase in children cyber attack and abuse um, the pandemic increased the internet usage everybody's using now devices schools are closed so they are doing zooming and they're using connected device and maybe the zoom is open and doing other stuff so uh it's not getting better and it's getting worse and worse and worse and we are as adults uh, we have a uh, big responsibility and unfortunately the situation is horrible Right. Wow. I'm so sorry. I, I think it, it was it was really hard for me. I think that this is uh, one of the first times that I'm mentioning it uh, publicly. Uh, probably the first time. Um, uh, it, it was a while until me uh, could speak about it uh, publicly and, and actually uh, start to be active. Um, yeah. Um, wow. I see. You know, when you are becoming, so not only that we were not, uh, that we were not aware and I was not aware of the statistics, 
being part of the statistic even before you know the statistic is 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 crazy because uh, I think that this there's a lack of awareness for that. I was shocked by just seeing these numbers. Absolutely. Wow. I'm so sorry. What what do you think digital marketing companies can do to help keep our children safe online? Uh, First of all, let's think about it. I mean, the kids are not going to come to us and say, hey, uh, our situation needs to be improved. This this is our job, the adults, uh, society, business leaders, companies, regulators, governments. This is our job and our responsibility. As as I mentioned, the regulators are years, years, years behind. Um, so it means that we have even bigger responsibility because I think that until the regulator will come um, and do something about it, it's it's going to take a lot of time. Um, specifically, 99.999 of people do not know and not aware and. Uh, do not know enough about the situation. Even me, that I I think that I know the internet really well, I do not know how to instruct my own kids. Uh, so the lot of the lack of education is 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 crazy. Um, so one thing that we need to think about that. Uh, if, 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 if someone thinks that COPA compliant um, is protecting your child, you're completely wrong. And if you think that you downloaded an app from the kids category, then it's safe, you are wrong. Um, and, and I think that the lack of coverage and media coverage about this subject is, is, is a problem because we are not aware of this situation. So we need to be more aware. Obviously, companies need to build responsible products, uh, but uh, you know, specifically the safety products and companies and startup companies, uh, but uh, that to protect kids and children in the internet. But there is very little incentive for companies and platforms to actually use it, um, and it's very hard for these companies to monetize. And this is exactly where uh, the market needs some help in the form of of of, of regulation. Um, uh, and 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 a few points on that. This this is uh, platform monitoring for early uh, detection and post event investigation. And and I found that it's really hard for police to investigate cases. Um, specifically here, we don't know exactly what happened with uh, the Max, who is the uh, the boy that uh, we lost a year and a half ago. So we don't know exactly what happened. Um, um, and uh, finally, and I think that this is this is this is. Uh, uh, really important for all companies and specifically digital companies, companies that have some access to internet and stuff like that is social responsibility. A lot of companies investing a lot of social responsibility in CSR, but we found that there are very limited number of NGOs and organizations actually taking care of specifically on that subject. Um, and, and one of the reasons that we found that families are very embarrassed uh, by the subject. Um, it's not a subject that people like to talk about. Um, if you think about uh, cancer and NGOs and organizations that are helping and supporting uh, a patient with, ca- with, uh, with cancer, there are a lot of organizations. But in that case, you cannot find uh, many. Uh, this is why it was no brainer for us. And I'm really, really excited to announce today a uh, major Upsly Cares uh, initiative uh, for internet safety. And specifically, we announce a uh, uh, fund. Uh, to support it, uh, Max Fund on in, uh, in the name of uh, in the memory of Max, uh, we are making an initial uh, contribution to this fund of uh, one hundred and eighty thousand uh, dollars. We are going to invite more companies that want to participate in specific projects and stuff like that together with us. Um, the the goal is very simple that we set to ourselves. We set ourselves what, a, go- a simple goal to sail to save one child a year. While it's really hard to measure, uh, we believe it's doable. We believe it's doable just by adding education and making awareness of this issue. Uh, We believe that this goal is something that is achievable. And because we have the ability uh, to do that, I think that we have the responsibility. 
And I think that every business leader and companies need to ask themselves if they have the ability to save one child life, I think that they have their responsibility to go ahead and do it because there is no one else. The regulator is not there. It means that we have much bigger responsibility. Right. Thank you so much. Wow. What a goal. Thank that's all the time we have, but thank you so much. What a pleasure today. Or thank you. I, I have to say th thank you for sharing that very difficult uh, story with us. It is a very difficult experience to go through to have lost any child, especially if that is a family member and no child should have to lose their life for yeah, for, for this reason. Uh, I want to thank you both for joining us today. Uh, and on that very somber note, uh, have a great, uh, great evening and the rest of Rishay.